in the near future. Amen. And one of them is happening here, beyond what's already been announced by the pastor. For the Lord of my spirit this morning, uh, on the 29th of this month, April 29th, on Sunday morning, we're having Brad Flood come up into the house. Amen. And if you never met him, you're in for a treat. Amen. Amen. That's right. I mean, this brother is anointed. <laughs> Last year, we had three days of thunder. Mm. The Lord told me to call the conference three days of thunder. I'm like, Lord, I've never heard that before. And you know what God's response is? It's in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> so I looked at Psalms 29. It says, the God of glory thunders. Yeah. Amen. And so we had that meeting, and it was like heaven on <laughs> earth. I mean, it, there was days when you didn't want to leave church, and we, we stayed from early on till late in the night. Yeah. People just caught up in the glory of the Lord, laying out before God, fearing and trembling before the presence of the Lord. Brad is a man that, that will read your mail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, he will prophesy to you things that you think nobody else knows but you and Jesus. And he does it in a way that's going to bring forth blessing to the house. Well, the Lord put on my heart to have a second round of Three Days of Thunder. And Brad's a missionary to, to Brazil, and he goes all over different places. He was supposed to be in Canada this month. And so the Lord said, have round two, and have Brad back in the house. And I kept reaching out for Brad, and he was overseas, and he's overseas. And I've known him for a long, long time. We've been friends for years. I remember, like, in the early days... He would just shake and tremble under the presence of the Lord as the Spirit of God would come upon him mightily. And he was one of those people that would just wave his hand and the whole section would fall out under the power and the presence of the Lord. And that was before Benny Hinn had an opportunity to make that popular. I mean, he was on the way back then. The man is just full of fight, thunder from heaven. Well, I, I put it off and I kept trying to reach out for him. And the Lord finally put on my spirit, just set the date. And so I set it for 27th, 28th, and 29th. And I knew Pastor Jerry wanted to come here that Sunday morning on 29th, so we opened that opportunity. But so we set the date, and we still didn't have Brad. I mean, that's putting corresponding action to your faith, right? Yeah. So I said, Lord, if we got to get somebody else to come up and try to fill his shoes, then we're going to do it anyway. And so on a Wednesday night in our church meeting, we were praying. And the Spirit of the Lord prompted me, call Brad back in the house. I mean, you can have what you say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we called forth his name. Brad Flook, all of us, looked up our voice in one accord, come in this house. Yeah. And when we said that, his anointing showed up in the house. Oh. Wow. The glory just fell on us. We fell out in the power. <laughs> and one many things after that, Brad called me. I didn't call him. He called me. Wow. He said, Pastor, you won't believe it. But I had a cancellation this time, and I'm open to come in April. Uh, uh, here's what the Lord put in my heart for you. This is going to be a meeting that you want to make sure you invite the people that you've been wanting to invite. Because we want to fill this house up with men and women that are hungry for God. People that are in need of a miracle from God. Because remember the Lord showed me, after the meeting's over, if you didn't invite them, you're going to leave this place and you're going to say, my God, I wish that so-and-so would have been in the house. Amen. It's going to be one of those meetings that you won't be able to explain. It's going to be one of those meetings where the glory of the Lord is going to hit the house so strong that all you can say, like David, I was glad when they sat on to me. Yeah. Let us go to the house of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So you're going to have an awesome time. And we're going to be here with them, so we're going to celebrate that together. How many brought your Bibles today, Amen. today, this morning? I'm so used to Sunday night church. I'm still waking up this morning. Push, right? Wake up. I'll tell you, the Lord already has spoken the word of the Lord. And we go home right now, we've already heard from heaven. Amen. And we've heard what the Spirit of the Lord has already put in my spirit to communicate to this church. I like how God brings confirmation to what he wants to communicate to the people. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. He that has ears to hear, yes. let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord says to the church. Amen. Amen. Well, before I get into this, I want to share, this morning, I had a dream. And normally I don't remember my dreams at all, but this one was kind of unique. And so we meditated on it, and we spoke about it with my wife on the way down. And I was coming nigh onto the church, I began to allow the interpretation of the dream to be unfolded to me. 
And what it was, we were standing out in the middle of the field, and there was people around us, but there were people that was cloning other people. And so they kept multiplying and duplicating, and they would become an image of somebody else that was in the flesh. And some of the faces, and they were fake people. That was the biggest thing about it. They were all fake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I shook my head out. I'm like, Lord, what is this? People being multiplied but are fake. They're phonies in life. Mm -hmm. And finally I got so tired of it. I'm like, stop cloning the people. We don't need any fake people on the earth. Amen? We need genuine people. We need people that know how to flow in the spirit. We, know, we, we need people that know how to walk in the spirit of God. And some of the faces I recognize, and I won't, I won't mention their names, but I saw some of the familiar faces of people that were phony. Mm -hmm. And what the Lord began to show me as we were coming close to the church is, that's what religion has been doing. Mm -hmm. wow. Because for the most part, the church has cloned people after their religious persuasion oh, right. and not after Christ. That's right. right. But God wants us to be in his image. Yeah. He wants us to be diligent about our father's business, doing what Christ himself did. He said, as the father sent me, even so I send you. Mm. People that are in the image of God and not phony are people that are doing the works of the kingdom. If you're an imitator of God, how many know you walk in love as dear children? You preach the gospel to the poor, you lay hands on the sick, you watch them recover, you cast out devils, you do the works of the kingdom, you wipe blindness out of people's eyes, all the works that Jesus himself did, even so, we do likewise, amen? amen. And, and so, there's too many religious phonies in the earth. And I always say this way, every church is not the same. That's right. mm -hmm. They all have his name on the outside. But they don't have his glory on the inside. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I would rather be in a place of simplicity than to have the greatest edifices that mankind could ever build Amen. and not have the presence of God there. Right. I would rather be like Jesus and born in a manger in a place of simplicity where the glory shines down out of heaven. Amen. And be in a place where we know that God is walking in the midst of the congregation, doing great and mighty things in the midst of us, than to wonder whether or not Jesus showed up. Mm. Yeah. So they all have his name on the outside, but they don't all have his presence on the inside. And we know that God is not a respecter of persons. Right. Amen? Amen. The same Lord over all, the Bible says, is rich unto everyone who calls upon him. Mm. For there is no difference with God. That's right. Come on. The God we serve is an awesome God. And so we want genuine imitators of God. Amen. Yeah. People that follow after the Spirit, people that know how to walk in the Word, people that know how to stand firm and do exploits in the name of the Lord. That's right. Psalms chapter 46. I was sitting at home one day, and the Lord gave me this analogy for your church. And there was a reason why the Lord gave me this particular passage, and it's because we know the devil is on a rampage. Amen? Yeah. But we also know that he is defeated. That's right. And that we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us and gave himself for us. If God be for us, who can be against us? Right. But I want to read verse 1, Psalms chapter 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, Though the waves begin to roar against us and be troubled, though the mountains shake with swelling thereof, and then he pauses right there with that little word, seal. And the word seal means stop for a moment. Think about what was just said, and then give praise unto God. Amen? Amen? So the Lord said the psalmist had written an, an, an exaggerated situation. I mean, the earth being removed. How I many know that's bad? Mm -hmm. The mountains being cast into the midst of the sea. That's bad. The waves of tribulation rising up against you. We know what the Bible says. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard against him. Right. <laughs> but God said, we're going to have times in our life 
where we are encountering situations that seemingly is beyond our control. Yes. And sometimes we don't know what to do. We don't understand why is it me that's being picked on, picked on by the enemy? Why has the devil chosen me out of everybody else? And sometimes we have the mentality of Charlie Brown, why is everybody always picking on me? <laughs> but the Bible says that Herod stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. Mm. So if you're going through something, it doesn't mean that you've done something wrong. Mm. Right. The truth of the matter is, you might just be doing something right. 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 And the enemy wants to oppose you. Mm. The enemy wants to stop you. If he can do anything to stop you, mm. he's going to try everything in his arsenal to do. But yet he cannot keep us from fulfilling the will of God in our life. Amen. Now, the Lord gave me this. When Jesus sent the disciples out into the boat, out into the midst of the sea, it says he went up into the mountain apart and prayed. <clears throat> he prayed all night long until we know it was what, the fourth watch of the night when he came walking on the water. But the Bible says when he was in the mountain praying, he saw his disciples out toiling in the rowing. I mean, they were fighting against the winds that were boisterous against them. They were fighting against the waters that were trying to overtake them. They were trying to survive. Yeah. A lot of God's people, we get in this mentality that we are in a survival mode. Come on. Mm -hmm. But we're not called to be survivors. We're called to be overcome. rebel against the kingdom of darkness and do exploits in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But the Bible says he watched them. And he saw that they were in the midst of trouble. And God showed me in my spirit, you as a church, you've been suffering much persecution against the kingdom of darkness. There's things that moved it against you. And it's like, I don't understand why this is happening with me. We are standing on the word. We're believing the promises of God. We're overcomers by the blood of the Lamb. And we're standing, but yet the enemy just keeps wave after wave trying to push himself in opposition against you. Uh, the good news is, Jesus takes notice of what's happening in this house. Right. Yes. He says, touch not my anointed and do my yes. prophecy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Yes. Yes. Jesus watching in the midst of the night, he comes walking upon the water. Yes. And the Bible says the disciples saw him and they were afraid. They thought they had already transitioned over into death because they thought they had seen a ghost. <laughs> Jesus come walking in the midst of the water, and the scripture says this, he would have passed them by, had not they called on to him. Mm -hmm. mm. And what we need to do in a time of trouble, lift our voices on high, uh -huh. spend time with God, cease from striving, which it says on here, and know that he's God, and he will be exalted among the heathen, among the ungodly. But we have to learn to get into the place of rest with God, and he tells us there's a river, the stream whereof are make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. I mean, that's something you never want to forget. That's right. We didn't come here to confer among flesh and blood. We came here to have an audience with one. Right. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, yes. and forever. Hallelujah. Yes. We come to have an audience with him who has the power and the ability to overcome any opposition that would rise up against us. Yes. And even though in our strength it seems like we cannot prevail, we're not standing alone because the greater one is on the inside of us. Yes. And the Bible says that God before us, who can be against us. Come on. Right. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Yes. He's in the midst of her. And I'm going to call that to your remembrance today. God is here. Right. One of his names is Jehovah Shama, meaning the Lord is present. Yes. Yes. God is dwells among his people. Amen. Jesus shows himself to be alive, but many infallible proofs, both by signs and wonders, which God has done by him in the midst of us all. Right. Amen. And so he said, there's a river, and God is in the midst of her. And here's what the Lord gave me for you. She shall not be moved. Amen. 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 We've got to learn to be Steadfast, yes. unmovable, yes. always abounding yes. in the work of the Lord for those who be the Lord, the of being in God. Shall not be moved. The intent of the enemy in hitting you over and over again is to get you to back off the profession of your faith. That's right. That's right. 
He don't want you to stand on the word because he knows it's the word that will defeat him That's every right. time. Yes. Amen. 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 When, when the devil came to tempt Jesus, he said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Mm. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of the Lord shall endure forever. Peter said it's like, it's a more sure word Glory. of prophecy that's been delivered unto us. Glory to God. So hold on to the promises. Knowing that God is not a man that he should lie. That's right. God is a man of promise that he ain't able also to fulfill. Right. And when we stand before God, we're not going to be able to say, Lord, you gave me much promises, but you delivered little. And God said, no, it's not me that withheld those good things from you. <laughs> it's the reality that you were double-minded. You were unstable in all of your ways. Come One on. day you'd stand on the word. The next Come day you would confess your faults yeah, and it. your problems. That's it. Instead on. of magnifying the Lord and trusting yes. that God's going to see us all. through. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Cease from striving. Mm -hmm. The Lord wants us to enter into a place to rest. So here's a little game before you. Every time the enemy tries to rise up against you, reckon yourself to be dead to that. Mm -hmm. yes. A dead man has no emotion. A dead man has no reflex. A dead man has no response to what's being inflicted against him. That's right. yes. So we're dead to sin, but we're alive only God. Yes. And so what we do when the enemy comes in, we've got to act like we don't even hear that. Submit ourselves unto Come God. On. Resist the devil and he'll flee from right. you. Right. But we only continuously confess what God has promised over our life. And God has anointed each and every one of us to do great exploits. Yes, right. Not just the apostles and the prophet and the evangelist, the pastor and the teacher, but God has called each and every one of us to do great and mighty things Amen. in the kingdom. Right. Amen. 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 So we're not going to be moved. We're going to stay on the word and enter into the promises, into the rest of the Lord and receive the promises of God. I want you to go with me over into Ephesians. <clears throat> also, the uh, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians, God's electric power come through you. Yeah. 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 If I can get to it, Ephesians chapter 4. I'm going to look at verse 1. I therefore, the prison of the Lord, beseech you that you should walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we're called. Walk worthy. And the word worthy means to walk in a manner that is of equal value. <coughs> and when we go out, it's not us that goes out, but it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. Amen. It's I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that lives within me. The life that we now live in the flesh, we live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave us a point. So when we go out, we don't go out in our name. We don't go out in our authority. We go out in his name, right. in his power, right. and we do and accomplish great things. So we walk in a manner that is worthy of the Lord. Pastor Randy said not long ago in our church that one of the greatest uh, flatteries that you can pay to any person is to try to imitate them. So we say one of the greatest compliments that we can ever pay to God is that we can walk in a manner that is pleasing to the Lord. Mm -hmm. But like what Paul said, when it pleased God, he separated me from my mother's womb that he might reveal Jesus in me. Yeah. I mean, that's our purpose in life, is that Christ might be formed in us. We walk worthy with all loneliness and meekness, with all long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There's one body, one Lord, one spirit, one, one calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God uh, uh, and Father above all, who's all and through all and in his all. But I want to look at verse 7. But unto us, but unto every one of us, is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Now, how much power is that? All. Oh. The measure that was given to Jesus. And we know Jesus had the spirit without measure, right? Mm -hmm. He came on the scene. He came full of power. He came full of truth. He came full of grace to minister and to deliver those that were in need of salvation. The grace of God is bestowed upon our lives. Now, he's not talking about the fivefold ministry yet, but he's talking about the overall body, that's the people that have been baptized into his body. We have been given a measure that is the same measure of Jesus. A lot of times we look at that and we feel like, well, that's Jesus, and I, I'm not him, so I don't have any power, so i got to look for power, and we come looking for flesh and blood to do what only God can do mm -hmm. in our life. 
And so we put our confidence in everybody else but the author and the finisher of our faith. We need to learn to put our confidence in him knowing that he is faithful. Amen? Amen. Amen. We can put our trust in him. But you've got to see yourself having the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Come on. It's not another spirit. It's not one like that right. spirit. It's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. One that is giving us the power to walk in the newness of life. One that has given us power just like Jesus who went about doing good, healing everyone that was oppressed of the devil because God was with him. We likewise go out in the same power, in the same spirit, laying hands on the people and believing that God's going to hasten to his word to perform it. you got to see yourself as an ambassador of Christ. You're not just somebody trying to get through life. You are called by God to give a representative of who Jesus is in your life, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And so the same measure that Jesus had is bestowed upon each and every one of us. I shared a story not long ago in our church that brought this back to my remembrance. We were at a school building, and Pastor Rod Parsley was preaching that night. We're like, ooh hoo, a man of faith and power, a man that does great exploits in the name of the Lord, a man that is on television all over the world, right? Yeah. So when you compare yourself among yourselves, you become what? Unwise. So I'm looking at the vastness of his ministry, the great exploits that he has accomplished in the kingdom in his lifetime. He's up there preaching. He gives an altar call, and everybody that wanted prayer comes up around the altar, and he starts laying hands on them, and they start falling out in the spirit. They were getting blessed. We were having church. (laughs) Right in the middle of that altar call, the spirit of the Lord spoke to me. He said, see that woman over there? I said, yes, sir, I do. She was sitting up in the front, just diagonally from where I was. He said, that woman, her baby, has died in her womb. The doctors want her to abort it. But she keeps believing me for a miracle, confessing her baby's going to live and not die. Her baby's going to live and not die. She held fast to that word. She refused to listen to the doctors. She said, I don't care what the doctors say about it. I'm believing God can bring resurrection power into my womb to raise his baby back to life. I'm not letting go of my miracle, she said. And the Lord said, see that woman over there? Her baby's died in the womb and the doctor wants her to abort it. I want you to go lay hands on her and command life to come back into her womb. You think I would have just got all excited and ran over there and grabbed the lady up and said, let's pray and believe God? You know what I did? Pastor Rod's ministry, right? Full of power, full of faith, filled with the Spirit of the Lord. Out there praying for people. And God told me to do that. I grabbed my Bible and I ran out the back door. (laughs) Because I was comparing myself to Pastor Parson. Who was flowing in the anointing, flowing in the power. I stayed outside. I refused to go back into that building. (laughs) And Lord put on my spirit, why won't you trust me to use you? I want to do great exploits in your life. I want to do signs and wonders through your hands. You are anointed by my spirit to do great exploits. And I'm like, Lord, Rod is in the house. He hears from heaven. Let him do it. (laughs) I stayed in the car. My wife came up. When service was over, several minutes later, I'm still sitting there in the dark. She comes out to me and she said, did you see that lady that was up there on the front? I talked to her after church. She told me her baby was dead in her womb. And she said she refuses to let go of what the doctors had said. She refuses to let go of what God had promised. And that she was believing for a miracle. So I grabbed my wife's hand, and we prayed the prayer of faith. I mean, there's a difference between the prayer of faith and the prayer of the manifestation of God. Mm-hmm. If God shows up, it's going to be an instant thing. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. So we, we just prayed a simple, safe, everyone say safe. 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 <laughs> when nobody looking, we in the yeah. car, we held hands and we prayed. Mm-hmm. Lord, we believe that you're going to bring this baby back to life. I speak resurrection of life to her from afar. <laughs> we were distant. We went home that night, and a few months later, 
we were at a revival service that the Spirit of the Lord prompted me to go to. When the church service was going on, I happened to look around, and I saw that family walk in the church building holding a baby. Wow. I'm like, oh my God, I wonder if that's the same baby that was dead in her womb. And so I uh, didn't, didn't pay attention to the rest of the service. I couldn't tell you what was said, what was done. All I thought about was that baby that that woman was holding. So I went out to the woman as soon as church was dismissed. I said, tell me your story. Is that the baby that was in your womb that the doctor said was dead? She said, yes, this is my baby. Mm -hmm. She said, what happened when I went home from that service that night, I saw Pastor Parson praying for all these people and they were getting blessed. I got frustrated. I thought that somehow God wasn't hearing my cry. Mm. I felt like the Lord didn't have time to pass me by. I felt like it was okay for everybody else to be blessed, but I wanted my blessing. Mm. And what she did, she went home and she couldn't sleep. And she said that she went down as early in the morning. She laid down on the bean bag and she said, God, I want my baby to live. My baby's going to live and not die. He's going to declare the works of the Lord. And she said she fell asleep crying out to God. And about the fourth watch of the night, something woke her up. She looked up into the heavens, into her ceiling, and in fire, it was embedded upon the ceiling of her room. It said, the Lord himself prayed. And she said, as soon as I saw those fiery words wow. written by the finger of God, I felt my baby jump in my room. <laughs> Preachers will disappoint you. If you put your confidence on the arm of the flesh, you're going to be sadly disappointed. Oh, right. But if you put it in the, your confidence in the one that never fails, Jesus Christ, full of power, full of glory, full of strength, full of the anointing of the Spirit of God to do anything that we need Him to do in our life, He will never fail. Amen. God delights in answering prayer. Amen. Amen. So if we call out to God, we're not calling out to the air where nothing can be heard. My ears are open to the cry of the righteous. Right. My eyes are over them that I might be able to deliver them. My hand is not shortened that it cannot say, neither is my ear heavy that I cannot hear. God is with us both to will and and to do of his own good pleasure. Yes. God delights in the prosperity of his servants. Right. Failure is never an option with God. Disappointment is never an option with God. God. Only glory to glory yes. is the option with God. Yes. Yes. Amen. That woman had her baby delivered. God himself prayed. Now, I thought about that Jesus seated at the right hand of the Father, oh. ever living to make intercession on behalf of those who put their faith in Him. Amen. At what level do we start getting into thinking it's too hard for God? Come on. When He told Sarah, Is there anything too hard for me? He said to Jeremiah, Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing is too difficult. For me. No matter how hard it is, when the opposition rises up against us, we've got to learn to trust in God that somehow God is going to make a way when there seems to be no way. Amen. I don't care what it looks like. I don't look to the natural. I look to the things which are eternal. Yeah. I look to the things which are unseen, knowing that the unseen is unchangeable. And I put my confidence as Moses of old, I endure as seeing him who is invisible. God himself going to show up, vindicate you like you've never been vindicated. Hallelujah. God, Hallelujah. God is going to make the devil sorry he ever thought to put forth his hand. Oh, come on. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. They said it today. God is opening up the heavens. Yes. Come on. The time for him to move like he's never moved before is upon us. Yes. Yes. And we just have to get out of the way and let God arise. Yes. 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 
At what point will we say it's too hard for God? We can believe him for little things, but when you're putting on God seemingly on the spot for bigger things, somehow we want to back away from that. Uh, Lord, let somebody else to do that. Mm -hmm. Because I know I'm going to use you unto you as given the same measure of yeah. grace oh, yeah. that was given to my son Jesus. Everywhere he went, he did the works of his father. And he did great exploits in the name of his father. Amen? Amen. God wants to use us mightily. So he gives unto every one of us a measure according to the gift of Christ. And then he ascended, he descended into the lowest parts of the earth, rose from the dead, uh, being highly lifted up and exalted by his Father. Let's pray. Father, we know that nothing is too difficult for you. But Lord, we put our confidence in your ability to break through upon our lives. We cast all of our care upon you, knowing that you care for us. And as she said earlier today, Father, we, we're going to receive. We're going to give it to you, and we're going to receive the breakthrough in our life. We're not going to allow the enemy to rise up against us any longer because he is a defeated foe. Yes. Yes. We're not going to argue with him. We're not going to strive against him. We're going to enter into your rest, and we're going to let you arise and the enemies be scattered yes. from our life. And God, we thank you today that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, that you're the mighty God that brings forth salvation and deliverance. And today, Father, we exalt you and we thank you, Lord, for your presence, your glory that's in the house. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I think about the worst situation that has ever happened in your life. Remember, we said, though the earth be removed, the mountains be cast into the sea, the waves begin to roar up against us. See, one thing the devil never makes and, and, and mention of her, he never reminds himself of in the time of trouble, God is still watching over us. Yes. Right. He hasn't left us, he hasn't forsaken us, he's with us always, even until the end. Now, I want to pray for some people, so let's stand up together. If you're in this place today and you've been encountering the attacks of the enemy, the onslaught of the enemy against you, I want you to come and I want you to just leave it at the altar today. Casting your care upon the Lord, knowing that He cares for you, that God has the power and the ability to deliver. It. Amen? Amen. Amen. And as an act of your will, you're going to bring it to the to the Lord and lay it down, yes. just like the song said, at His feet. Yes. We're going to sit at the feet of the Master and be like Mary. We're going to choose that good part. So I want everyone to come that wants to be prayed for today. If you'll come out and just leave it before the Lord and let God do what He wants to do. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your presence. Thank the Lord for the anointing. Father, we cast every burden upon you. You sustain us. You never suffer the righteous to be moved. And God, we cast our cares upon you because you care for us. Father, we pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we loose the power, the presence of the Spirit of God. Father, let the fire of God rain down upon this situation. Lord, let him know that it's not over until it's over. It's not over until you've gotten the praise and the glory from them. The Lord, we give you praise for it. Ha, ha. Shoo. Mm. Ha. Thank the Lord, we give you praise for it. Lift up your hands to the Lord and say, Father, I receive. Father, I pray through now in Jesus' name. We cast our cares upon the Lord. Yes. Ha, because he cares for us. Ha. Shoo. Thank you, Lord. Father, we lay hands on them. We declare the victory, Lord God, over their lives, over their lives, over their lives. In the name of Jesus, thank the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we declare it, Lord God. Victory. We break every stronghold. In the name of Jesus. Every stronghold, every stronghold, every stronghold, every stronghold has to bow its knee to the mighty name of Jesus. Thank the Lord. Father, we thank you for the healing, anointing, resting upon this family. The bomb of Gilead. Oozing into their children, Lord God. Oozing into their life, Father, we declare victory in the name of Jesus. Thank the Lord for increase. Increase. Thank the Lord for the prophetic mantle upon Brother John. Oh, thank the Lord. Glory. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. She said she wanted to pray for your grandbaby. And here's the thing. 
I, I learned to trust her because we had a lady that was on video that her baby was in intensive care ready to die. Mm. And the Lord spoke to my wife, let's pray for that baby. So we looked at the baby before the Lord, and God brought her back to life. She's living on, doing really well, totally recovered. And so when she said, we want to pray for your grandbaby, I'm like, honey, we're going to pray. Amen. So we're going to let the whole church pray with us. Come on, honey. Is your grandbaby here? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today. Hallelujah. Thank you. What's his name? Elijah. I want all of the old church friends say, Elijah, Elijah, be healed, be healed. In the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, we merit, we merit, healed, healed, delivered, delivered, in Jesus' name, Jesus, thank the Lord, yes, thank the Lord, 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 I see the anointing for healing flowing into your house right now. It things are going to be different because you're going to lay hands on them like you've been doing, but this time there's going to be something that's apart. It's going to be totally different. So if you're encountering different situations that rise up, just lay hands on them and say, Lord, I know your word is true. You're not a man that you should lie. Thank you. You know what I think about? I think about Jason. Our, our nephew, our nephew drowned. He was what, 11 or 12? He had seizures all his life. He had a seizure. They couldn't find him. He was in the lake. They, they found him. His uncle found him. Um, they pulled him out, took him to the hospital, didn't give him much hope, got a hold of us. Um, we went and prayed. We believe mm -hmm. God. But the one thing I remember about it is you took your sister, she was in the chapel, and the thing that you said, the mother has a that child, that's right. yeah. and that you have to give that yes. authority to God, yes. and let God have that child. Yes. And she went running to your arm and said, "Yes." She said, "Okay, I give you my baby." <clears throat> At that moment, he had the breakthrough. The next day, he came out of the coma. And I think I told the story here where the nun came into his room, knelt down, said her rosaries, and all of a sudden something came on her, and she rose up and spoke to him, <laughs> called out his name, and he jumped up out of that coma and got up and went to wow. home yeah. totally healed. So the mama and the papa both have authority. Yes. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for the anointing. Raise your hands. Yes. Yes. Father, we lay hands on him in agreement with the parents yes. and the grandparents, yes. the authority of this house. Yes. Father, we declare no more illnesses, no more no pain. More. Pain. Yes. 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 Father, we mark him as healed yes. by the authority of God, by the blood of Jesus. Yes. Yes. The Lord, he is healed from every infirmity, from everything that we try to attach us to his body. In the name of Jesus, we declare victory. Yes, Lord. Glory. Father, we declare it right now. Victory, Lord God. Victory, Lord God. Ah, victory, Lord God. Let the anointing come. Rest and rule in the world. Healing. The deliverance. You got to lift up your voice unto the Lord. When, when the enemy tries to come in, lift up your voice against them. Cry out to God. As you cry out of your spirit before yes. the Lord, that's going to break the strong Thank yes. 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 the Lord. We give him praise to yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Rest of you that were down for prayer, come up to the front so we know who you are. I know there's another row back there. I want to pray. Father, meet every need. We pray in Jesus' name. 
Lord, we speak healing and strength to her leg, to her body, to her back. We command healing to flow to her from the top of her head to the sole of her feet. Lord God, we just speak healing to flow. Ah, ah. Thank you, Lord. I see the anointing working in you. And I do acknowledge the Lord and continue to be in His presence. The Lord said you're going to get stronger and stronger and stronger as you stand in my presence. My spirit shall bring revival unto you and shall bring you out of this trouble, the time of trouble. And the Lord is going to turn that thing around and bring total deliverance and healing. Thank the Lord. We pray for you. Father, thank you for Brother Mark. Bless him today, Lord God. Let the glory of the Lord Hallelujah. just rest upon him Hallelujah. in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, Thank you, Lord, for my sister. Bless her, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Bless my mother, Lord God. I pray. Bless her, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for Sister Rose. Let the glory, ha, the glory of the Lord come upon her. Ooh, ooh. Thank you, Lord, for my sister. Bless her, Lord God. I pray. Ha. Thank you, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Sister Christina, I speak healing and blessing, refreshing to you in the name of Jesus, refreshing to the man of God. Thank the Lord, we release it. Hallelujah. Oh, ha, ha, the fire, ha, the fire of God, come upon him right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sister Melissa, let that be the Lord I give it to you. Pastor, me too. Ha, say, I give it to you. I cast my care. Say that with me. I cast it upon the Lord. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Thank the Lord. Glory. Ah, yes, Lord. <laughs> Thank the Lord. Father, we pray for his foot. In Jesus' name. You said you're not suffer the foot of the righteous to be removed. Lord, we speak healing to it. Be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you, brother. Praise the Lord. Uh, this anointing represents consecration of the Spirit upon your life. God is about to bring you into His presence like never before. At the intercession of the Lord, you're going to stand in His presence. God said, I'm going to raise you up to speak and to prophesy the word of the Lord. I'm going to hasten to my word to perform it. Ha, ha. Oh, yes, Lord. Glory. Thank the Lord. Shall I receive it? I receive it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Glory. Thank the Lord. We give you praise for it. Glory. Ha. Thank the Lord. Ah. Oh, Hallelujah. Yes. Remember she said earlier, spend time with me, the Lord says. You draw nigh unto the Lord, you will draw nigh unto you. As you spend more time in his presence, giving it to the Lord, he's going to elevate you to another level. Thank you, Lord. Another level of walking in the spirit, walking in the glory of the Lord. Ah. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Mm. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Ah, thank you, Lord. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Deep calls on the deep. Come over here. There's always a spot where the Lord wants you to stand. So, Father, right now, we just release her mouth. Glory. Fire, Lord God. Prevailing before the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the, the woman and the man of God. Lord, use them mightily in their days that are yet to come. The greater shall be, the, the latter shall be greater than the former. Father, we pray that the anointing of the Lord would just come upon them mightily, Lord. Glory. Yes, Lord. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Thank you, Lord God. I am hot. Yes. I was burning up coming down here. I'm like, I have a thing on 67. I'm like, we're going to the firehouse. I can feel the heat already. Oh, sorry. 
Thank you, Lord. The Lord was saying to you, my son, you have just begun. Oh, you have just begun with me. You thought you were doing some wonderful things, but oh, you you are, you are in for a surprise, say the Lord. I'm going to do some things through you now that you only dreamed I would. You thought about it, you wondered, wow, this would be really great if I could just do that. Well, you're going to do that, says the Lord, because now I'm going to anoint you afresh with the freshness of who I am. And you're going to go forth and be a great, great, great asset to me, saith God, because I'm loving on the way you love me. Oh, I love the way you love me and the way you've been faithful to me. And now you're going to see me move in your life in a whole brand new way, saith God. And Father, we just release that, that new and fresh anointing upon this brother of ours. And God, we just give you the praise and glory and honor. We're doing so in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen.